I've only seen pictures and stuff of it, but I see some people out there, and it looks like they're waving. All right, 1700. Yep, that's their boat right there, anchored right off that little peninsula. Sweet. We're here on beautiful Lake Washita. <laughs> exactly. Not Wachita. Today we're going to go on a solo cross country about 350 miles up to Lake Wachita in Arkansas. So say the name of the lake again. Lake Washita. O-U-A-C-H-I-T-A. -A. So I've been pronouncing it wrong all day. <laughs> La well, it's lake spelled, Wachita? Spelled really uh, Wachita. It's spelled really weird. Lake Wachita? Yeah. Wachita? It's right lake, here. Lake. O-U-A-C-H-I-T-A. -I, I spelled it correctly. Lake Washita. Washita. So we've got 6.2 quarts of oil is what I can see on the dipstick. We are topped off with ab gas. I already did the walk around pre-flight and we are good to go. I got all sorts of cameras rigged up in the plane, audio equipment, because I want to capture this trip, show you guys just how much fun we're going to have and hopefully inspire you to do the same. So the reason I'm going up to Arkansas is because a couple of friends of mine, they have a YouTube channel called Flying Sparks Garage and they do lots of automotive stuff. They own a 172 as well, and they just bought a boat, and they got a crazy, crazy good deal on this boat. It's a used boat, it's actually technically a yacht, and they didn't know it was a yacht until after they bought it. And they called me up, told me all about it, and said, you've gotta come see this thing, you've gotta come hang out on the boat. So, the airplane is packed, and that's exactly what I'm gonna go do. And I've got my brand new Flying Eyes Kestrels. So these are the brand new frames that they are just about to come out with, and I'm super excited to take this trip and really put these things to use. Go pre-order these sunglasses on the Flying Eyes website. The link is down in the description, and you can use coupon code AVIATION101 and get 10% off that pre-order. I can't wait to fly with these things. Let's hop on the plane. San Marcos Tower, Skyhawk 80991, holding short of runway 17 at Juliet, ready for IFR departure. Cessna 80991, fly runway heading runway 17, clear for takeoff. Fly runway heading, runway 17, clear for takeoff, 80991. Best 547, start your base turn now, runway 17, clear for touch and go. Base turn now, uh, clear for touch and go, 547. Best 18 Delta, you're following the uh, sky. Alright, windows mixture strobes. Runway 17. Thank you for flying. Okay, I've got the traffic inside, looking for a full stop this time, 18 Delta. Best 18 Delta, runway uh, 17, clear to land number 2. 17, clear to land number 2, 18 Delta. Alright, line up on the center line. Runway heading up to 3. Takeoff power set better than 2300. Acceleration feels normal. There's 50 knots already. There's 55, little encouragement. And we're flying at about 700 feet. Accelerate to VY. Step Arkansas Tower, Sky 566, November Delta holding short over runway 17. Sky 556, November Delta, San Marcos Tower, right to hold short of runway 17, landing traffic. Hold short for traffic, 566, November Delta. I got that traffic off my left wing in sight. Runway heading up to 3000. Tesla 991, turn left, heading uh, 080 and contact Austin departure. Thanks for your patience. 080 departure, thanks for the help. 991, good day. Always good to be polite. Alright, 80 knots in the turn, fly the airplane first. Bugged at 080, rolling around to 080, climbing through 1500, switch to departure. Austin departure, Skyhawk 80991-1600, climbing 3000. Skyhawk 80991, Austin, IDENT, climb and maintain 5000. IDENT up to 5000, 80991. 80991, radar contact, a mile southeast to 1600, and uh, I'll have to turn you on course to about 10 miles. 991, roger. Climb checklist, speed 70 to 78, we're doing better than that, 82. Power set full, mixture set full. Instruments calibrated and cross-checked, and we're bugged and everything looks like it agrees. 
Taxi landing light, we're going to leave it on in the terminal area and flight plan open. We're talking to ATC. Climb checklist complete. I'm going to clip the bottom of this cloud here, 85 knots, passing 3,200. About 7. 991, navigation on course. On course, 991. Direct 7, Mike 3. Direct 2. Alright, 80 knots. Number 181 in uh, Rural Lake. Direct Eagle Lake, 18 Romeo. Through the puppies. Alright, we're on course and going up to our yeah, final cruising altitude. Skyline 18 Romeo. Off the left Traffic wing there, that's Austin Bergstrom International Airport. That's where I did my first solo and my private pilot check ride. American 1640, turn left, heading 260, descend, maintain 2000. 260, down to 2000, minus 1640. 1328, buddy, Southern Quebec, thank you. Good old Austin, Texas. We'll always be home. Turn 04 Kilo, contact Houston Center, 128.6. 28.6, 04 Kilo. Mooney 78, Quebec traffic, 1 o'clock, and uh, 3 miles eastbound, 7000, Skyline. Skyhawk 991, are you still today? Skyhawk 991. Say again for 991. And uh, Skyhawk 991, are you still today? Hey, firm. Hey. <laughs> you asked me that in the middle of changing the batteries in my headset. <laughs> Memphis Center, Skyhawk 8091015000. For 80991, left center, roger, hot signal, altimeter 3010. 3010, 80991. 73 miles out from 7 Mike 3, 39 minutes. Crossing the Red River now. 2764, Scott 4, center, altimeter 3007. We have just crossed the river. Welcome to Arkansas. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain speaking. Uh, 474, Bravo, Charlie. Okay, sounds We're good. We're about to start yeah, our final descent. Where the temperature is a beautiful 84 degrees Fahrenheit with mostly clear skies. Light wind out of the east about four knots and we'll have you on the ground here in about uh, 45 minutes or so. Thank you for flying Aviation 101. Country 3007, County 4 is 126.57. How'd I do? What do you think? You're the pro here. My announcement needs work. Number four, Bravo Charlie, to center maintain 2,600. Okay. We should be able to circle that peninsula on the lake at pattern altitude. Because this hill right here is 1516. I don't know, it's going to be 1700 for what we're going to use. But like there's a tower right here in the... 991, descend pilot's pressure maintained 4200. Five seconds of hot springs weather in the Mount Ida Notums, you can expect the visual approach. All right, we can go ahead and cancel IFR. We do have the weather at Mount Ida. For 991, roger. No known or observed traffic between the Mount Ida Airport. IFR cancellation received. Change of budget to crew squawk CFR. Squawk VFR going to advisory 80991. You have a good day. Yeah. All right. Lots of tire tracks going across the runway. Gonna have to watch out for that. We'll get a good look at it on downwind. Warning. Terrain ahead. All right. So that's four flight warning me about obstacles. Oh yeah, that's their boat. I've only seen pictures and stuff of it, but I see some people out there, and it looks like they're waving. All right, 1700, that, that's their boat right there. Anchored right off that little peninsula. Sweet. Bears traffic, Skyhawk 80, 1800, we're entering the right downwind runway 26, will be a full stop, Bears. The runway looks like it's in good shape and we have a tiny displaced threshold and we'll just make sure we land after that on runway 26. The car peat's coming out. We're slowing down 390 knots. Bring the power out. Keep the nose up, hold that pitch attitude. Wide arc, wide arc on both airspeed indicators. 1 1000, 2 1000, 3 1000. Flap set 10. Mixture's coming full rich, let the nose come down. Pre landing. Brakes pedal test, they both feel firm. Landing light is coming on. The auto pilot's off. Seat belt shoulder harnesses were both strapped in. Mixture is set for best power, full rich. Car peat's on. Fuel selector is on both, and the flaps as required. We got 10 degrees. Flaps will probably go 20 for this landing. Pre landing checklist is complete. Nose down here. And mind our DMMS, stay at least five knots above that while we're in the turn. Bears traffic, Skyhawk 80991 right, base runway 26, full stop Bears. Let that wing come up, and then we're going to keep that turn coming around, keep that nose down. Bears traffic, Skyhawk 80991 turning, final runway 26, be a full stop Bears.
73 knots. Slowing. Short final runway 26. Stabilized. A little bit of a bump there. A little nose up trim there. 70 knots. 1 1000, 2 1000, 3 1000. Laps 20, powers to idle. Nose at the numbers. We're going to have a little excess energy here. That's okay. We're just going to hold it off the runway and let the airplane tell me when she's ready to stop flying. Just let her stall. Hold her in this landing attitude. A little bit of a sink there and then a balloon. Save it. There we go. Oop, wheelie. There's the right wheel. And there's the nose. Yeehaw. Bears traffic, Skyhawk 80991 clearing the runway, Bears. So y'all bought a boat. We Dude, did. We bought a boat. And it's pretty rad. It's a big boat. So we're here in Mount Ida right now, and this is really close to our favorite lake, which is Lake Washita in Arkansas. So say the name of the lake again. Lake Washita. O U A C H I T A. So I've been pronouncing it wrong all day. <laughs> lake, well, it's spelled, lake Wachita? spelled really uh, weird. Wachita. Spelled really <laughs> lake weird. Wachita? Yeah. Wachita? It's right lake, here. Lake, o U A C H I T A. I spelled it correct. Lake Washita. We're heading out, we're going to a campground, it's called Tompkins Bend, but that sign is really neat because Emily's family's been coming here since, I think 1964 is the last I heard. Uh, and there's this marina and restaurant down there, and they've got uh, little hotel rooms, and it's not changed like since 1964, so they can go down there and reminisce, and the rooms and everything will look exactly like it was when they first came down. So it's really cool, we, we cherish this spot a lot. whole goal was to have a hangar here at this airport and then have a cool boat that we could fly in and grab our boat and take it to the lake and we were on our way back from bringing our ski boat here when we got a call from a dude that said <laughs> well, he had been on the lake with his family and they got out there and the out drive went out on this boat and his wife was mad at him he was hot he was like I just got to get rid of this boat so we have a 28 and a half foot Bayliner cabin cruiser. We paid five grand for it. It took us about three days to get it fixed. He was and upset. immediately, <laughs> yeah, he was not happy. And, and you'll see, but the trailer that this thing is sitting on is probably worth the five grand that we paid for it. It's really wild. The dude that had it, he called Bayliner and they said, well, it's going to be eight grand to replace that out drive. And that just made him more angry. And so he was so ready to get out from under it. And we weren't going to go spend eight grand on it. So Aaron found a rebuilt out drive in Austin and we're like four hours from Austin. So we zipped up there, grabbed it, bolted it on and went out on the lake the next day. So it's just been such a cool adventure with that boat and we can't wait to show it to you guys. Did you there? Okay. Emily is going to give me a tour of the ship because we can't call it a yacht. <laughs> no. Because it's actually a yacht and we can show the plaque. <laughs> it's, right, it's right down there. It's a small yacht and there is a certification placard. All right, we go down here couple of steps down and it's all right here. So we have our little seating area for the kitchen and that turns into a bed obviously. Kitchen, stove top, lots of good drawer space, food, forward berth which is I believe where you're gonna sleep Josh. Sweet. This is like the longest portion and I think you'll fit nicely and this is a really really good breeze. And then back here is another bed and it kicks all the way underneath here so it's it's almost like a king size you know sleeping space. It's really good. So that's where we sleep. Okay so something Emily forgot to tell you. Here's the head. The sink turns into a shower which you probably won't use but you might use this. And here's the deal. If you clog it you unclog it. That's the way it works. We're gonna motor over and have some dinner then come back to the boat and find a cove because there are some storms over there. And we do not wanna be on open water with storms. I concur. I'll be here for the second trip to land. You guys enjoy the journey. That lightning's beautiful. 
We chowed down to a fantastic dinner on shore prepared by Emily's giant welcoming family, but the weather was rolling in faster than we thought. The wind started dragging the boat's anchor to the opposite shore with nobody on board, and Aaron drove the truck around and stopped the boat in knee-deep water just before it hit the shore, and they got it safely anchored and rowed out the storm. It all ended with only a little prop damage to one of the smaller boats that also broke anchor. Amongst the chaos, the wind also blew my hat off in the dark driving rain, and I called it a loss and assumed I'll never find it, but I found it washed up on shore the next morning. The fact that everyone is safe, the boats are safe, and I got my hat back, I think it turned out pretty well. And the bad weather yielded way to a calm, drizzly morning. We're anchored just offshore here, and it's been a pretty good day. It's been a great day. It's been a great day. It's so much fun. A lot of fun. So we're in, what, like 40 feet of water right here? Probably 40. 40, so. Yeah. So right over here on shore, there's supposedly going to be some food waiting for us here in just a little bit. And I'm excited about it. I'm very excited about it. I'm always excited about food. So the canoe, the dinghy, is on shore since Emily took it, so we're just going to hop in the water and swim our way to shore. That's right. Uh, so that being said, the camera's gonna stay here, which I think is okay. Sometimes you just gotta put down the camera and enjoy what's right in front of your eyes. So I think I'm gonna go enjoy a cold beverage with you guys and some, some good sure. food. And it's an absolutely beautiful evening out here on the lake in Southern Arkansas. Absolutely beautiful evening, adverse yeah. weather today. I love how I just said adverse. I have no business using that word on a boat right now. I need to relax. <laughs> but once it cleared up, it made way to beautifully blue, mm. clear skies. And it's an absolutely beautiful evening. So we're going to put the cameras down. We're going to meet everybody else on shore, hop in the water, and swim our way over there. Yeah. It's a beautiful evening. Let's do it. So here we are on and identifies as a yacht. Is that our new boat name? I think it is. <laughs> I think that's going to be the boat name. I, I think it it's, has to be. It's I, so right, but it's so wrong. But it does have a plaque underneath the <laughs> cockpit that says yacht, yacht certification. certification. It does. It technically identifies as a yacht. So that's why we have to call it a ship because we don't yeah, want people to think we take ourselves too seriously. This here vessel <laughs> or this, this here cruise ship. This is what it's all about. You know, it's 350 nautical miles or something like that from San Marcos up to here. When we bought the airplane, we got a hell of a bargain yep. on it. You know, we bought that thing so cheap. It was a piece of junk on its on its way to a salvage yard, frankly. Probably another couple years sitting on the ramp and somebody would have just scrapped it. Mm -hmm. So we saved that airplane and we've obviously dumped a lot of money into restoring it. But I mean, like you guys just- That's the just, same scenario. You guys snagged this If you're this willing thing, to right. shop and buy something that needs work, right. buy something that's broken or somebody's tired of, you know, working on, you can get a good deal and you can make memories on something that's just incredible. Exactly, I mean, exactly. And if you do the work and you're you're willing to spend just a little bit of money, you can, it, it becomes, so much more accessible to so many people that thought it wasn't accessible. Just like owning an airplane, it's really not as expensive as a lot of people think. No. It's really not. You know? People buy Suburbans that cost more than a lot of the airplanes. A lot like of the oh, yeah. airplanes in the a, sky. A, a new Suburban costs more than what we paid for the 172. <laughs> right. yeah. So the moral of the story, what I'm getting at, is you don't need an extraordinary airplane, you don't need extraordinary toys to go have an extraordinary time, an extraordinary adventure. Go with what you got. Look at what airplane you have in your hangar right now, even if it's a Cessna 150. What is it capable of? What can you do? Go do that. 
go have fun with that. And then eventually, you know, you might be in a position to upgrade it. So you just gotta look beyond what the industry is telling you, you know, oh, yeah. if you wanna travel, you need a Mooney or you need a Bonanza. No, I can tell you for a fact, use me as an example. That's not true, I've taken that airplane coast to coast, Mexico yeah. to Canada. It, it goes all over the place. I wanna take it to Alaska. I wanna do some ridiculous things in that airplane because it can do it yeah. and it can do them safely. My biggest problem is hesitating. I always hesitate too much. I, you know, there's this idea and I'm like, well, you know, packing, planning, fuel, and I talk myself out of it. This one, I just kind of didn't let myself talk. I didn't talk myself out of it. I was was like, it because I was hounding you? You were kind of hound, hounding me and I was like, well, I think it would be a fun trip. It's really beautiful to fly up there. You know, it'd be fun to film it. And that's what we ended up doing. And so far, it's just been an amazing time. And here we are sitting on the bow of your cruise ship, <laughs> drinking our coffee. <laughs> doo, doo. Yep, that's right. <laughs> so look at what you've got. Look at the tools that you've got. Look at, look at you know, the type of airplane that you have, whatever it may be, and just go take an adventure. Don't hesitate. Stop hesitating so much. That's my problem. And whenever I don't hesitate and I just go, I plan it, I never regret it. It's always absolutely amazing. So I'm going to fly the airplane back to Texas this afternoon after we finish our coffee and head back to shore. And I'll top the airplane up with gas. It's going to be about three hours home, go up to a higher altitude, get some cool air. Loved being here. Let's do it again. And when you guys start taking this to super cool places, there's an airport nearby, I guarantee you. <laughs> exactly. Uh, right. Let me know. Let me know. When y'all go to Lake Powell, I'm going to fly into Page. And I want y'all to come pick all me right. up. For sure. <laughs> For sure. And bring all of your gear so all I don't, all I have to bring is the iPhone. That's right. That's right. <laughs>